Okay, we had yet another crash. I got to figure out what's going on with my phone here, guys. But uh, uh, we had about a three second, four second delay in there. Uh, Trish came up to me and uh, told me that they are in fact uh, having IHS, which is one of the shelter people, come out. Um, they'll either be here tomorrow or Friday. Uh, somewhere between, yeah, now and Friday. Or sorry, tomorrow and Friday they'll be out here to uh, take care, take care of her and uh, get her the type of help and uh, care that she needs. From uh, what she uh, mentioned to me is, uh, I guess they have worked with her once before, which the you know the lady uh, had confirmed with us. But whatever happened, she fell through the cracks of the system and ended up right back on the streets with no uh, care being provided. But uh, they'll see to. Uh, making sure that it gets done but uh again this would be the second part or the third part for uh the beginning function of raid 2 22 and uh sorry about that i don't know what's going on like i said i'll probably do a master reset and go through my phone obviously something's corrupted something um as we know i'm our, my phone's already been jacked with by the city once again so that might have something to do with it I'll, I'll get it fixed as soon as I can, guys. <laughs> I just had someone uh, jump on and uh, say that uh, both mine and Doug's uh, popped offline at once and that it could be that they, they're knocking our single out, which that's happened before, but they haven't done that in a couple months at least. I don't I don't believe it's that because my phone's actually popping up saying that uh it crashed or it didn't do that before it would just not work for online and I would lose my single and have to go to normal record so I don't know this time what's going on for sure but that is kind of weird that both of us would not get knocked off at the same time usually we have a red van when they do that hey uh, take and go around and look for a van or something sitting around like uh, maybe down in this area here just walk down the sidewalk see if you see a fan sitting there and if there is walk up to it see if someone's in it hey Doug Uh, they're saying you got knocked out too. I got, no, I got 13 minutes and 11 seconds. Oh, they said right on there, both of us got knocked out this last, uh, the last time I got knocked out? Yeah. It was at the same time. Well, that's cool. Well, I have Andy checking again. Okay, so. One man. Oh, you can't go by West John, boy. He's sharp. Man has a PhD in engineering. <laughs> That's when this kind of stuff pays off. When you have a war against the poor, when you have a war against the poor, you need a, you need a PhD kind of guy in engineering to find a bag of uh, personal possessions in the tree, which is illegal. Those without private residences must live yeah. in public, but without private possessions. Well, the thing here is uh, you have that item that's sitting there, but you got all the items out there, and they didn't do nothing to him. 
I don't see them handing them tickets. I saw him talk to him, but I didn't see him write anything to him. So if they're going to write, you know, just anonymous stuff sitting around, then why are they still able to be out there in the park? All these people with all their stuff. What's the difference? Any answers to that? They're going to go to Bishop Street and start uh, making seizures at the bank from the real criminals. People that cause people to be homeless. And we're going to follow that as they uh, march down uh, Bishop Street and our first Hawaiian bank, the Bank of Hawaii, Central Pacific. We got a $135 million bailout at our expense. Of course, I'm kidding. They're not going there. They're too powerful. Oh, the decisions that we have to make with an item in a tree. Well, this is very important. This is, this is really important. So we got to make sure we do this correctly because if we don't get this tagged correctly, <laughs> well, this this is how this is how the engineer does it. He he places his hands on the item. He 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 wraps he wraps. Yes, universal precaution. Seriously, we don't want to get sick, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> this little walk we're doing remind me of a good dubstep introduction right here. <laughs> going up for the attack. Oh no. See, this is the kind of activity we have going on here. But they're going to tag the house's stuff and leave this alone. They'll tag stuff that's in use, but leave this alone. And they're roping off parts of the park, you know. They're, they're making it so nobody else can use it. <laughs> it's crazy. <coughs> Injustice alert. Mayor Carlisle's war on the poor and the peaceful continues with armed men coming to seize the property of those that have the least. Led by Wesley Chun, cabinet post, director of facilities maintenance. $112,000 a year, he lives on a private residence. It's 52,000 square feet of stolen Hawaiian land in Nuuanu. What does he do for a living? He steals from the poor. He raids the peaceful with armed Force. It's an injustice. Injustice alert. Doug, one of our youth streamers, voicing his opinion out. Injustice alert. The war on the poor. It's a war on the peaceful. It's an armed war. They're seizing possessions from those who have the least. Those who have the most are seizing from those who have the least. Injustice. And it's illegal. How is this different from theft? Theft by the rich against the poor. Injustice. Illegal. It also violates the Kanawai Mamamahoi, the law the splitter's panel, which allows people to be undisturbed by the side of the road. People and property, actually. It mentions property, too. <laughs> The splintered panel is on the emblem of every single Honolulu police officer. <laughs> Block. <laughs> they are violating the law that is on their emblem. The law of the splintered panel. I encourage everyone to look it up. It's on the internet. It's that It's in the Constitution of the State of Hawaii. Hawaii State Constitution. There are laws against theft. No laws against using armed force, against threatening with weapons. All these laws are being violated here. And 
How's it going, Captain? Well, this is one of the houses is homes. This is what he's made it. As you can see, he's made himself a shelter here since nobody else wants to help him. And uh, this is what they do. They're going to tag it today and then anytime after 24 hours come around and steal all this stuff instead of offering them something to help them. Armed police officers, so that they may do what's illegal and immoral. The war against the poor, the war against the peaceful. It's an armed war. I do want to thank uh, Trish for taking time to find someone. Hopefully, they get here when she says uh, tomorrow to or the uh, day after, <laughs> and uh, help that one lady out. But that's one person out of. At least uh, two people that we have on this corner. On this side of the corner here, we have anywhere between seven to ten people that stay over here. So I don't know. Uh, what is that? Approximately ten percent of the people that help. You are witnessing crimes and injustice committed by the Honolulu Police Department and the Department of Facilities Maintenance and the Office of Housing. Created and run by prosecutors, not by people that know anything about housing. 112,000 dollars a year this PhD gets to harass the poor, to harass the peaceful protesters, to seize property from those who have the least. And now they're going off to another place that has homeless people that they can harass. Trish, we'll follow you guys. Everyone follows Trish. She's the coordinator of the Office of Housing, but actually a prosecutor that causes houselessness by seizing the material for the acts of living from those that are poor. Good job, guys. Well, hopefully, uh, who Trish called uh, earlier will come through in the next two days. I mean, I would think it would be possible to get someone here now, but I guess uh, later is better than never. So, she, she really needs help, so <laughs> hopefully somebody comes out here. Okay, they're all taking off and leaving, and uh, I guess uh, we'll sign off. Again, if you guys want to go back, you'll see that it's in three parts. Sorry about that. My uh, iPhone crashed twice. I have uh, uh, the city or somebody, again, busting into my phone and doing their crazy stuff to it, tapping it. The phone's giving off my location all the time. It's a normal practice around here. It takes anywhere between 10 to 17 hours to correct the damage of what they do between me and uh, Apple. <laughs> Thank God that the local uh, Apple store is more than willing to help keep my Ustream and my phone going for the cause and uh, works uh, pretty adamantly in uh, getting the phone and getting, getting it corrected every time they do that. So I'll have this... Uh, problem fixed here in the next uh, couple days. Alright guys, you have a good one.